Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, here recently, somebody reached out to me and asked me if I could take a look at a Docker application called Mealy. So Mealy is a recipe management Docker application uh, that's actually being very currently maintained. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, GitHub page for this, uh, we can see that uh, a lot of this has been updated within the last week. So I'm really stoked to see that, uh, that this is something that's currently being uh, maintained and developed and things like that. I've had a chance to play with it and it's actually very, very cool in the way it works. Now I will say the one, I guess, downside to this right now is that uh, the, the developer is using, using uh, uh, Docker Compose 3 series uh, stack, so we can't actually just copy and paste this uh, into stacks in Cortainer and make this work. We're gonna have to do this one through command line, but I promise this one's really, really easy. So uh, let's actually jump over to my desktop and take a look at how easy it is to install Mealy. Okay, so basically what we're gonna need uh, is two things. We're gonna need uh, this GitHub repository page. Of course, that will be available in the description down below. And we're gonna need to be uh, SSH'd into our server. So the first thing I wanna do, uh, let's just take a look at where we are, we're at home. So what I wanna do is just make a directory, oops, mkdir, I'm gonna call it Mealy, as I figure you probably should. And then we're gonna CD into Mealy. And then uh, we're good to go there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just clear my screen. Um, and I'm gonna do a git clone, and then we'll come back over to here. We're gonna grab this. Uh, we're just gonna grab this URL right here. We're gonna copy that. So we're gonna do git clone, and then this URL and press enter. And then we're gonna give this a minute to do its thing uh, and download the files that it needs to download. Um, and then we will go in and actually edit the Docker Compose file to fit our server's needs. Okay, so now we've got that done. So we'll do a list and it created a folder in there. So we'll do a CD Mealy, we'll do LS. And here we can see that there are uh, some different files and folders in here. What we wanna focus on right now is editing this docker compose.yml file. So we'll say uh, nano uh, docker compose.yml like so. And then uh, there's just some, some basic stuff in here that we wanna take a look at. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, the, the version is 3.1, so that's one of, one of the reasons we can't run this uh, as a stack in Portainer. Uh, also, uh, it relies on some other files and folders that we downloaded, so that's why we're doing all of this through command line. Um, and so the first thing I wanna take a look at is actually uh, the ports right here. Um, I think I've already got something on 9, uh, 9090, so I'm gonna change this to 9898. Of course, you can change that to be whatever you'd like it to be uh, to fit your server's needs. Uh, below that, we've got some database stuff uh, for usernames and passwords uh, and ports. I, I, would, I would advise you to change the username pa and password uh, here. Uh, don't change the, uh, the host or the port. Uh, those are standardized for, uh, for, for Mongo databases as well as specifically this stack. <clears throat> Uh, below that, we've got volumes. You could uh, move this to a different volume if you wanted to. I'm just gonna go ahead and let, let it run in this folder uh, for the sake of this video. Shouldn't be an issue for me at all there. Um, and below that, we've got uh, the Mongo uh, database uh, container here. Uh, and basically all we're gonna do, if you replace the username and password up here, uh, you'll want to change them here as well, uh, just to make sure that it can connect. Um, the image we're gonna use is a Mongo Express. Um, Oh, I guess we're doing Mongo and Mongo Express here uh, to make this work. And then of course, uh, we've got some usernames and passwords down here as well. So I believe you'll wanna change those to go along with the other usernames and passwords you change. If you change it in one spot, make sure you change it in all three. Um, and also on here, uh, I believe you can leave uh, this 9091. If you need to change it, that one should be fine to change. Um, I don't think that's gonna cause any issues there. Uh, but basically at this point, we should be good to go. So we can press Control O, enter, Control X, and it'll bring us back to here. Uh, I'll clear my screen again and say, uh, Docker compose up minus D, and we'll hit enter. And then it's gonna go through a process of downloading and, and, and pulling and extracting and building. So it's gonna go through this process for quite a while. Um, and then uh, once it's done, we'll come back and take a look at Mealy. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got uh, everything pulled and compiled and built. Uh, so now what we should be able to do, 
Uh, I had this up um, just so we could kind of take a look here. Uh, so we've got Mealy, we've got Mealy uh, uh, Mongo Express and Mealy Mongo uh, for the database interfaces there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go here. Uh, I, I will say when you first get in here, it just doesn't look like much uh, as far as, uh, I mean, there's just, there's just nothing here. Um, so what you've got is a couple of options here. Uh, down at the bottom right hand corner, there's a little plus. If you hover over that, uh, you've got two icons that pop up. One is uh, just a, like a tablet with a pencil. If you click that, you can uh, come in here and build your own recipes. Um, you know, as far as you can add an image. Uh, I had, I was actually playing with this the other day. Let's see. I had a, a picture of a chocolate chip cookie that I had used in here. Um, um, I don't seem to have it anymore though. Um, so we're not gonna do that, but uh, you could, you know, of course, give it a name, type in a description, add ind individual ingredients here. Um, is also add individual steps for each of your, uh, your, your recipe, however that works. Uh, you could do like a bulk add, um, and then each line will be treated as a list. You could do it that way as well if you wanted to do that. Um, there are uh, additional options for categories, tags, notes. If you wanted to add notes to your recipe, that's always an option there as well. Um, and then once you've got all that saved, or once you've got all that ready, you can go ahead and come up here, click the little save button, and it will save your recipe. So very, very simple in how that works. But what I really like about Mealy is this. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say uh, Choco, oops, if I could. Right, we're just gonna search for a chocolate chip cookie recipes. Uh, we'll come over to here. Uh, this this looks good. Um, I'm, I'm sure this is a great recipe. Um, probably makes total sense. What I'm gonna do is just copy that URL. Um, and then I'm gonna come over to here. I'm gonna click on this link icon. I'm gonna paste a link in there. I'm gonna click submit. And what it's done now is it's actually pulled in that entire recipe for us without having to do any work. Now, what's great about this is then we can go in and click on uh, this if we wanted to. We could add or edit this uh, to fit our needs. Let's say it's a great base recipe, but I want to add more sugar or more chocolate chips or whatever. Uh, we can come over here and we can change the recipe over here. We can change the, the steps. Uh, we can add notes, uh, all kinds of really great stuff there. Uh, what I want to do is actually come back to the homepage, though. Here is uh, our recipe. And what I do like about this is they they were very considerate, or the developer was, in adding this little button down here that says original recipe. If I click that, it takes me right back to where I got the, the recipe originally, which is great, like well done in thinking ahead like that um, and, and making sure that uh, we'd always have access uh, to our source material there. Uh, so let's go, let's take another look uh, just for the sake of it. Uh, let's do this one. I'm going to grab this URL. Uh, I'm going to go back to the home page. Uh, I'm going to hover over. I'm going to click the link. I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in there. Click submit. And now we've got uh, banana pancakes uh, as a recipe in here. Um, so here we've got a, a couple of these. It also pulls in the images. Now, um, of course, this is all recipes. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at a different website entirely uh, and see what we can get because I'm not sure, I, I've tested this on a few websites and I've had really good luck uh, being able to import recipes this way. Um, but of course this one worked here as well pretty easily. Uh, let's say um, chicken recipes. Uh, I, I like chicken, so let's, uh, let's take a look. That looks good. Uh, this is from cafedelights.com. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come back over to here. I'm gonna hover over, I'm gonna click the link. I'm gonna paste that in there, click submit. Let's see what happens. Just like that, it pulled in another recipe. So this seems to work very, very well uh, on a broad range of sites if you wanna import recipes from other sites. So well done to the developer of Mealy. Uh, he doesn't even know I, I exist or that I've made this video, but uh, it well done on, on making this so user friendly. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to touch on just real quick. Uh, you can uh, set up uh, dinner, uh, apparently, uh, meal plans, you can set that up. You can set up di uh, dinner for today. A whole planner here available for meal plans. Uh, we can go into the settings. We can change uh, from a light to a dark to a system default. We can change all of our, our different colors in here. Uh, we can export our recipes or back them up. Uh, we can do that. Um, 
meal planner webhooks. There's, so there's uh, some additional development stuff that he's added to this uh, to enable more functionality if you wanted to, to go that route. Uh, apparently, there's also uh, Nextcloud data. If you've got, uh, you can integrate this with Nextcloud, apparently, or uh, Chowdown. So again, well done to the developer, making this very robust and super, super easy to use. So I think that pretty much covers uh, everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, I know my videos don't warrant a lot of comments. Um, so the thumbs up is a little interaction that helps get the videos uh, recognized by YouTube. So if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. Um, but with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.